It's focused on the working miners' leaders and their families. We had loads of threats. We had threats on Colette's life, um, which for anyone that's got kiddies knows that's not nice. Um, then one day in particular, I remember, um, Colette came through to the kitchen and said, Mum, there's loads of people, loads of men on the lane. I got a phone call from one of the neighbours saying that there were about 80 uh, or so pickets outside our house. I put my girls into the kitchen with the dog because I knew that nobody would get through the door with the dog. <laughs> and um, I'm getting a bit shaky talking about this, aren't I? I can feel it. <clears throat> um, and I stayed in the hallway to the door where the pickets was outside. And I knew that they wouldn't get past me either. Now, my first thoughts were, you know, Sheila and the kids are in there. Uh, so I, I ran out through the pit gates, right through the picket lines again. I saw our car pulling into the drive. Um, I didn't know at the time, but one of our neighbours had rung down to the pit, told me what was happening, which I never thought to do. Um, and he came um, up the lane, and because they wouldn't move, there were quite a few of them come down on the bonnet of the car into the drive. I got a small escort at the time. I drive a Range Rover now, and I've prayed to God many a time that I'd got that Range Rover then, because I'd have got a dozen of the swines on the bonnet, and they deserved it. They were terrorising two young kids in ours, uh, uh, and my wife. Time can 